हल्यू हल्यू हल 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 Don't mind me. I'm just testing the audio because usually I would record in my closet, but um my closet is very small and it's really hot and this script is super long and I didn't want to spend 3 hours recording in there. So I hope you don't mind that I am recording on my bed. Just just on my bed. I'm just just recording on my bed. Hey there everyone. It's been a year of silence from me on YouTube and it's been 2 years since the last tutorial video. I'm sorry about that. I won't waste your time explaining it here though. But I do have a few things to say. Time stamps below if y'all want to skip this part. But for the people who are staying, I'd like to thank you all so much. I had a lot of stuff going on. I still do, but I would like to thank everyone for the only video on my channel with so many views. Upon the upload of the Fire Up Pocket tutorial video <laughs> that I totally did professionally, it's totally professionally edited in Windows Movie Maker. I have received a non-stop river of comments. Most of our follow-up questions about Fire Alpaca. The video was intended to be an introduction, so I didn't go too much in detail. So I'm sorry about that. I was responding to the comments at first until it got a bit <laughs> overwhelming. So I decided to answer everything in one video, which is this video. If you're interested to know more stuff like how to draw with a mouse or how to make full art pieces and such, let me know in the comments. Oh, I have a video coming out after this one that's already ready actually. All right, let's answer some questions, shall we? By far the most asked question is I accidentally deleted so and so window, what do I do? So when this happens, first of all, don't freak out. I actually mentioned about this very early on in my video, but I think a lot of people skip that part. Basically, to open a window, go to the top and go to Window, and click on the windows you want. It should have a little check mark if you enable that window. However, I have seen people who say that they aren't able to get their windows back despite checking the box and clicking on the windows that they want. I am no expert in these kind of technical stuff, but I recommend one thing. On the Fire Alpaca website, you have older versions of Fire Alpaca that may be more stable for your computer. You can test those out if you want. Maybe they can work. Next question: How do I save a drawing that I have made? Okay, so to save a drawing, go to File and click on Save As. Then you should be able to choose the folder you want to save your image in. You can name your image and then set the image file type. You can save it as a Fire Alpaca file, which is the MDP file, so that you can open the project later with all the layers still separated. It's like a Photoshop file. If you want to make it an image, you can save it as a JPEG, which is a flat image with a white background. If you didn't color the background, it'll turn the background white. You can also save it as a PNG, which enables you to save it with a transparent background. So that basically means that all the parts that you did not color will appear transparent. So this is basically how you make emotes and stuff. I'll show you little differences right here on the screen. Ah, here we go. Another popular question, and this answers another question too, so I'm going to combine these. What tablet do you use and do you use a mouse to draw? The answer to those questions are no. I do not use a mouse actually. I use a Wacom bamboo tablet, which is a very old tablet that they don't sell anymore now. I think they don't sell it anymore. I'm pretty sure some resell theirs, but they stopped producing it basically. It's a very cheap tablet. I think it was around $60. 
I got it from my mom as a birthday present back in 2012. She recently bought me an iPad though last year, so I've been drawing a lot on that. I do recommend investing in a drawing tablet. It's a handy tool to get started with digital art. It doesn't even have to be an expensive one at all. But while I do recommend that, I know that not everyone can get their hands on a tablet because of certain issues like you are still young, probably. Uh, your parents don't support your dreams. <laughs> and for that, there are actually ways you can make decent art with just a mouse. If you want a tutorial on that, you can vote for it in the poll. Another question I see here and there is something along the lines of the lines I draw appear slower than where I'm actually drawing, which I also will be compiling with the questions, how do you link your tablet with Fire Alpaca and other similar questions that usually ask about malfunction and technical stuff. First of all, Fire Alpaca is automatically synced up to your tablet once you have your tablet installed. If that's not the case for you, you can try some other options. This could be a technical issue. It might be your tablet driver that you have to reinstall or try downloading an older version of Fire Alpaca. Sometimes for me in particular, whenever I have these kind of issues, refreshing my desktop works for that. Another thing is that if you set your correction a bit too high, it'll slow down your program. So I recommend setting it to a number that suits your comfortability. For me, I'd go for 10 to 20. If it's not all that, you might need to contact your tablet support because it might be a hardware issue. I'm so sorry I can't provide many answers for these problems. Like I said, I'm not a tech expert. I don't know much about programming, so I highly recommend contacting your support for these issues. I wish I could help. Again, I'm sorry, but I only know how to use a drawing program. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with computer issues. Another popular question is how to change the size or scale a drawing. Okay, for this, you have to first be on the layer you want to change the size of. Make sure you're on the correct layer. After that, go to the top and go to Select and choose Transform. From there, you'll be able to scale and rotate the whole layer. There's also an easier way to do this is with the shortcut Control t but what if you want to change the size of one particular part of the layer? For example, you have so many things on this layer, you just want to change one part of it. Well, take the lasso selection tool at the top, which is this peanut shaped thing, and draw the part you want to change. You can also use the selection pencil for this. It does the same thing. After that, control T again, and you can change it that way. It'll Change like that and then press OK. Remember to press OK. OK. So what if you want to change multiple layers at once? Because you actually can do that. All you need to do is to make a folder in your layer window by clicking on the floor. Excuse me. All you need to do is to make a folder in your layer window by clicking on the folder. Select all the layers you want to change the size of and then drag them into the folder. Now, if you select the folder and press Ctrl T, you should be able to change the size of everything at once. Whoa! I sound like a moron sometimes and it legit makes me wanna die. I did see a few people asking, how do I insert an image to draw over it? This one is pretty simple, actually. You can do this right from the start. Instead of going to File and clicking on New, go to Open and select the image you would like to draw over. This could be a sketch you made in real life and so on. So open that and you can immediately start drawing over that. I recommend doing that on a new layer and lowering the opacity of your image. Opacity opacity. You can also add an image to a drawing you're already working on. For that, do the same thing. File, open, choose image. It will open in a new project. Now all you have to do is to select everything by going to select and choosing all or use the shortcut control A 
and then use shortcut control Z. After that, go to your current project and press control V. You know how control Z, control V is copy paste? Yeah, that. Your image should appear in a new layer. Next question. When I use the bucket tool, it leaves white uncolored particles behind on the edges. Is there a way to fix that? This is a very good question. Yes, there is actually. You see, to color, I recommend doing it on another layer that is below the line art. Then select the bucket tool and make sure the reference right here is set to canvas. So select canvas and now we just click on the part we want to fill. But unfortunately, oh no, it does not fill the edges as you can see. The trick here is on the bucket tool option, there is something called expand. If you set that to one, it'll expand the fill by one pixel. You still have these small parts that aren't really colored, but just simply draw on those. It doesn't take long. Okay. So I think that's all I can answer for now. I'm sorry I can't answer everything, but I think I got the frequently asked questions out of the way. <sighs> I know some of you really just want to know how to make an actual piece already, but I haven't gotten around to showing you how to do that yet, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Which is why I have a little surprise for you all. I'm currently at the same time recording a video on how to make a simple artwork. It'll be a quick video explaining from sketching to line art to coloring to shading and through the whole process how to make a very simple thing. In that video basically you'll learn pretty much all the basic stuff to make like digital art. I should have worded that better. Yeah, in that video, basically, you'll be able to use all these techniques into making something that you can be proud of. So stick around if y'all want to see how to do those. I have the video already done right here. I am just waiting to release it. If I can get a number of likes, maybe I'll release it earlier. I don't know. I, I guess as long as people... If you demand it enough, I'll release it earlier. But I am going to release it... I'm planning to release it next week. So yeah, if you want me to release it even earlier, I guess you'll just have to demand it real hard. Because my plan is I want to finish another video before I post the next one so that I have constant content going on because... <laughs> Not posting for a year is making me feel like my channel is about to die. Anyway, that's all for now. If any of you do end up being able to make something with the help of my tutorials that I am not really good at making because I'm a disgrace of a human being, do post them on Twitter or Instagram and tag me. I'd love to see all you guys' artwork. It makes me happy. It makes me finally feel like I come. Shut up! Notifications. <laughs> it makes me finally feel like I have accomplished something in life. All my social medias. Shut up! Jeez, my iPad keeps making those sounds. I should probably mute it. All my social medias are in the end card and on my channel banner. Thank you so much for sitting through this whole thing. Thank you for being around in general. I honestly feel really happy that the previous tutorial video went so well. I, I didn't know people were going to receive it so well. And thank you all for that. I genuinely don't know how to express it. So yeah, I'll see y'all soon. <laughs>